5,895 pound, virtually new, 27 foot uh, rear living Mallard coming in on trade here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And you might be looking at this going, good gravy, wh what is somebody doing trading in a, a virtually brand new RV? That's a very fair question. It's the first thing we asked as well. Uh, previous owner of this enjoyed it a lot, used it, but very quickly found out it was way too small for their lifestyle, their mobile working style of RVing. Swapped it out for an opposing slide rear living fifth wheel here at Haylet RV. And that's the only reason it's here. Not because they had problems. And actually, if you look at it, they added a lot of add-ons and upgrades to this thing that you're going to get the benefit of, but you're going to get it all at a used RV price tag and basically still get a new camper with upgrades. This is a really really sweet opportunity for someone. I don't expect it to last long the way things been going. Now overall this thing is, I mean, being a like 2020, it's virtually new. And the tricky part about Mallards is they, they're kind of a tale of two cities in a way. Visibly, like first glance, they've got some good eye appeal and whatnot. When you really, really uh, compare them on paper versus a lot of other things out there, what you see, though, is this is really designed to be more of a base level, what I kind of call like entry level ultralight. And there's reasons that I say that, and there's nothing that's bad on this camper, nothing whatsoever. I'm not trying to be derogatory. My goal is to be informational so you understand what you're getting in return for your hard-earned money on this one. Now, what's nice here is you're getting a, a more simple series trailer at a used price tag with a bunch of upgrades like slide awning, strong arm jacks, a couple things on here. What I'm getting at is like uh, the uh, the window. So they're not the only camera that does this, but like that's not a breeze through window, saving a little money there. You'll see that they are extremely minimal on their lighting inside of a Mallard, and that is a huge way to cut costs on the RV to keep the price tag down. It's something that I think uh, a first-time RVer might not know to look for, may not be educated enough to understand what they're comparing against. Like, there's T-molded countertops here, and especially uh, a lot of campers nowadays have gone to a sealed-edge thermofoil-type countertop material. There's nothing wrong with this. That's what I'm getting at. There's nothing wrong with anything. It doesn't go quite as far as you commonly expect when you see a fiberglass skin thing called an ultralight. Um, especially, like, this is a sharp modern decor. This looks really good. I love that light fixture. God bless America. That is just cool looking thing right there. So there's nothing wrong with this. Is it the fanciest bell at the ball? No. Is she going to get you there? Is she going to get you home? Heck yeah. There's This thing's got plenty of good qualities. It's lightweight. I like that... Uh, laminated vaulted ceiling that North Trails you Mallard. You'll I'll I'll explain why I just called it North Trail in a minute when we get outside. Um, the uh, the look of it is sharp. The shaker style cabinetry. Anytime I see uh, a used RV like this, I always try to be fair. I try to point out something that isn't perfect so that you know I'm not just blowing smoke at you. And there's a teeny tiny little nick in the uh, cabinet right there. That's the worst I've been able to find on this one. I also want to point, because I know that we have some really eagle-eyed viewers, if you're looking under those chairs, you see the linoleum looks a little funny. There's actually a completely matching but separate scrap no, uh, linoleum like sheet right there under those chairs to help, you know, just prevent scuffing and whatnot. It's a very inexpensive, very smart way to be able to, uh, uh, you know, cover that area. I like the extra large entry handle that the previous owner uh, added over there on the door so you can pull that shut more easily. If I back up a little bit, if we uh, take a look down here, open up the kitchen space, a couple drawers, they're, uh, you know, a, a compressed particle board with a sticker at, but frankly, there's nothing really wrong with that. I know that a lot of people would prefer something like a plywood box drawer, like on a J-Flight or, or like a lot of campers. But, frankly, a lot of uh, RVs have compressed particle board core cabinet construction with stapled fasteners. And even though that is considered the least desirable style of cabinet construction, you know what doesn't tend to fail? Those cabinets. They just don't tend to fall apart. Compressed particle board, it's not fancy, but it can get the job done. Um, there's some interesting kind of things going on here, too. Like, you got a nice high-rise faucet. I like that Furion stove. An 8-cubic-foot, a little bit larger two-way fridge freezer. So those are all sharp features. Um, the uh, overall look of this is, is it's pretty cool. Um, this is also, like, Wi-Fi ready. 
if you want to install like a WineGuard Connect system, that's what that little guy in the ceiling is telling us right over there. Now over here at the dinette, they actually do something on this dinette I really, 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 really like. I think that's like five reallys if it gives you an idea. It's a five on the Richter nerd scale thing. Anyway, the dining table has a free floating like folding leg base. It is a very inexpensive way to make what I think is probably pound for pound the most effective dinette out there. So just like, kind of like I was saying when we started inside here, just because it isn't expensive doesn't mean it's not a good thing because this table is less of a knee knocker than common posts. I can free float that table over if I want to bring it over here in front of the sofa, uh, you know, for guest dining or a dinofa situation back here in a little kind of rocking chair to sofa, uh, you know, conversation corner. And you see storage doors below the dinette. There's nothing insufficient here. A neat thing that they do like to add to these. Below the entertainment center, you see a black rectangle. That is a central vacuum system. And all the components are still uh, present and accounted for. Now, I don't think this brand... Mallard does not include a TV standard from the factory, as I recall. But you will see whether the previous owners put these in or the factory did. I don't know. The, some very nice brackets here and uh, a matching one in the uh, bedroom as well. So this is a very conventional 26 rear living kind of layout. Um, it gives us some nice space. One thing, I always try to be fair, especially first timers, you don't know what you don't know. So take my 12 years of experience and just kind of think about this. There's no pantry in this camper. It does, I feel, lack in kitchen storage. I hope you appreciate that kind of straightforward candor. There's storage below the dinette, there's storage above the rear chairs, there, there's just no traditional pantry. So it does have some storage, it's just, uh, I, I think it's different from what a lot of people are thinking. I want to make sure you know what you're getting into here. Uh, a lot of campers have gone to this where it's just a little step-in shower instead of a tub. I'm personally a big fan of that. And I actually do kind of like, like if you are going to do a shower curtain like they've done here, which is less expensive and lightweight, there's benefits to it. It's got the little kind of, you can swing it out to give yourself elbow room and then put it back to get it out of the way bar adjustment job. Those are cool. I like that. I also like the easy way you can open the uh, vent above here. There's some really sweet things in this camper. It is a simple plastic sink, simple plastic stool, T-molded countertops, nothing, again, to write home about there, but every single component on this RV is completely functional. There's nothing stopping you from having a good weekend. This is a camp queen, by the way. This is a 60 wide by 74 short queen, if you will. You could upgrade to a true queen if you wanted to have some room. Uh, if you don't mind sacrificing some walk around room, that is. The bed's easy lift with some struts. You can get uh, down below there for storage. I like these side stands. And I don't like these side stands. <laughs> Here's what I mean by that. The outlets are awesome. The fact that there's a side stand here and it has the uh, radius edge on this thing so you don't stab your shoulder if you roll over at night, like those are great. I like the storage of the cubby. I wish it was a drawer because if something gets shoved all the way back there, man, you're <laughs> you're going to look like you're giving an elephant an enema to get that thing. You're going to be elbow deep in that sucker trying to get stuff out of there. <laughs> the accent wall in the front is nice here. Good lighting in the bedroom. I do like the full overhead cabinet storage right here. And the uh, the work they're doing right here, like this is soft touch. It just, it has a nice hand feel. It has a nice eye appeal to me. Like I said, in the living room, there's a TV hookup over here as well. And uh, if we open this up below that, you can see a big closet space. So you've got dual hanging closets plus that bonus closet right there. That is a very handy, very valuable thing. That bonus dresser drawer below, very nice stuff. Now, if I back up just a little bit, twist around, you can see that we do have a sliding pocket privacy door here for the bedroom as well, which I know a lot of people would certainly appreciate over a, a curtain. I know I would. Now, if you're hearing what sounds like little birdie feet on a tin roof, I've got an umbrella above us right now. It is sprinkling a little bit. It's not terrible, but I'm kind of wrestling with a camera that really needs two hands while using an umbrella with the other one. I'm kind of half holding on to stuff with my forehead here. <laughs> All kinds of things. So let's kind of start right back by the door where we first popped out and work our way around. You see the stable steps, which are, you know, very popular, very common. And uh, especially in a rear living room model like this where the door is behind the axles, they are going to do you one heck of a job because since you are so far behind the axles, it is easier to make the RV bounce and jounce around. And speaking of that, you see the uh, wide stance stability axles. That will help keep this thing from bouncing and jouncing around in transit. 
And actually, I suppose in theory it would help a little at your destination, but I've never heard anybody report that, so I think that's more theoretical than practical. Uh, down here, we've got four corner power stabilizer jacks. It has power awning, power tongue jack, but you'll see in the front and rear jack some JT strong arm uh, jack leg stabilizer been added, and that in conjunction with those stable steps will make this thing feel like it is on a concrete pad when you get to your destination. It, they, they are fantastic. Up here on the tongue, you see the previous owner added a handy cargo box uh, here. It looks like they've kind of uh, done the job of enclosing the batteries and uh, I haven't been able to get into that yet. Apologies, I, uh, I usually am working like with effectively advanced access when these things come in. So sometimes I you know, don't have keys yet. The previous owner is actually inside right now uh, making this uh, swap out official. So <laughs> I, I, I really am working ahead of the curve here. One of the things I do like, and the, the rainy day is kind of making me think about it, is the wraparound nose caps that are on these um, uh, mallards and north trails, which in case you're curious, uh, mallard is what's called a private label. This is absolutely 100% literally a Heartland North Trail ultralight travel trailer. Uh, there is, our, uh, is one big specific camping group who basically buys a bunch and puts their own sticker name on it. They call it Mallard instead of North Trail. That's what we're looking at here. Um, it's that, That's not a criticism, just giving you information. This RV is far more common than you might realize. You can get them anywhere. Previous owner also added that uh, slide awning back here. I mean, they added the stabilizers, uh, uh, well, the jack leg stabilizers on the stabilizer jacks, the uh, cargo box, the uh, slide awning up here, they added a bunch of stuff to this, several hundred, uh, actually in total, I bet they had over $1,000 of add-ons on this that you folks are going to take home at a used RV price tag. You see our outside shower, black tank flush here, and if I can figure out a way to juggle the camera and the umbrella, I'll get you down a little bit lower, let you take a look at the underbelly. You won't see much, you will see that it is enclosed and heated, however. Um, this is not a proven zero degree quote unquote four seasons camper. It is however a pretty solid uh, extended season RV. One of the other things that's helping us in that regard is the fact that this has two inch sidewalls versus a very common inch and a half wall. And uh, basically that takes you from an R7 to an R9 in the walls. There's really no way to get more insulation in the sidewall of a laminated trailer like this. It's based effectively completely on the thickness of the wall. If I'm going to be ultra picky, from the ground level I can see that the roof needs a brief cleaning, but that's as picky as I can get on this thing. I can also see where they added the Max Air vent covers, both over the bathroom and the rear uh, living room from here. Now, there's not a whole lot going on on the back here, just a bumper with a spare tire cover, or uh, pardon me, spare tire mount, not a spare tire cover, because obviously <laughs> it's not. Um, you can, however, use this full uh, bumper as like a sewer hose tube if you're so inclined. And then up top, you can see that there is a uh, rear camera prep. With all the other options and upgrades I see where the previous owner applied to this camper, I'm almost a little surprised they didn't add those as well. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with what I see. I mean, it's a virtually new RV at a used RV price tag. It looks like they added a little uh, entry door holdback right here. But other than that, like I... I mean, I don't, I don't see any issues. I don't see any problems with it. I try to find, like I mentioned that the roof needs a clean and like, I try to find something that isn't necessarily ideal on these when I go around them. And I haven't been able to find anything. It's been well kept, it's late model, it's a sharp rig. Looks good to you. Give us a call, we'll get you camping. Doesn't matter if you need pieces, parts, hitching, finance, uh, truck and trailer package deals or RV delivery. We can get all that right here at one spot in Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun and happy camping everyone.